it's been two years since I've posted a video on YouTube. I actually um, didn't think this would ever happen. Uh, I lost my channel two years ago, and pretty much I gave up hope after the first year, after trying to fight it. I didn't actually lose my YouTube channel. I lost my Gmail and therefore I lost everything associated with it. Um, I never thought I would get it back. Uh, I will do a video about what all went down. I'm just now um, realizing what actually happened. And it was an attack. My Gmail was taken over. Uh, they did play in my YouTube channel. Uh, they've done some things that, uh, there's been activity there. Let me put it that way. Uh, what else do I want to say? There's been a lot of changes on YouTube since I've posted a video. So I actually have a lot of catching up to do myself. There's a lot of new rules, um, a lot going on, and uh, I've got to educate myself. I have had company for the past two months, and this is really the first time I've had to just sit down uh, and get into it and actually know what I'm dealing with. So I'll try to keep this video short, uh, but I do plan on posting videos here on YouTube. For those of you who have not followed me over to Brideon. I've been over here for two years and I've got a lot of videos over here. Uh, I just continued to post here so you might want to come over here and play catch up uh, if you will. It's under in Brideon under 11, Levet 11. Uh, as a matter of a fact my older videos are here. Let's see if we can sort oldest from my original channel that was saved by another person and I re-uploaded them here three years ago just as an archive so you can literally start at the beginning uh, Brideon has the beginning and the end and YouTube has all the middle videos uh, pretty much, in one way or another, every video I've ever made is still out there. Uh, there are several people that archive my videos on their own servers or different websites or channels or platforms. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. Uh, you can find my videos on Daily Motion. Uh, uh, quite a few platforms, actually. Now, uh, I'm just going to pick up right where I left off, which is back over here. And I posted, um, I had a bit of an epiphany myself here on this video because I have been looking at everything under the assumption that these rituals that the elite have been doing, um, was to break a seal, to open a seal. Uh, I meant to create a seal. And I've come to realize I think they're breaking one. They're not, because they're not in the business of creating, really. The only thing they create is chaos. Um, they're in the, they're not in the business of creating. They're in the business of destroying. So, it's not creating a seal. It's breaking one. And uh, it's breaking a great seal. It's the seal of this age. Of this entire age of Pisces. The, the age of the mutable cross, rather. Not simply Pisces. Because all of the... Let me do this. Let me grab a pen real quick. Because... The three crosses, which are mutable, fixed, and 
card and all. All have one thing in common, and that's four points. Four extensions. I used to think it was lines. I used to think it was about the lines, and the cardinal cross confused me. But then it was the old Aramaic numbers that really clued me in, because it was so Pythagorean. Um, like one was that, because it only has one angle, and two had like two angles so you it had two corners so to speak and three had three and it went all the way to nine and then you had the zero which actually wasn't in the old Aramaic but it has none so it has no value it is of no value because it's a circle it has no corners no angles no angels um, so here when you're talking about the three crosses, it's talking about the four elements. Uh, so it's the four points. The four points. The symbols are simply a way to distinguish them. But we'll, even though we're simply in the age of Pisces, uh, all four points over here are being venerated on the earth. Earth, water, air, and fire. They're all represented by a race, by a color, by a symbol, by a, a sound, a frequency, a chakra, a planet. Uh, it's, a, it's a really incredible how much information is be embedded in what we call astrology. Uh, now, I still have my issues with Solar astrology and lunar astrology are Occidental, Oriental, Eastern, Western, Tropical, Vedic. Uh, call them what you like. But at the same time, I, re I realize they both have their purpose. Because all things come in threes. Uh, but I have very little understanding of what one calls uh, prognosticating astrology. Uh, to where you're using it to predict the future, which I see you really can. You really can do this. But the way they're doing it, I have no comprehension of. Uh, the only way that I seem to be able to understand astrology is through alchemy, because it's an alchemical process. Uh, everything within that circle belongs to nature. Uh, that's nature's circle, uh, and it runs in circles and cycles. Uh, it's quite incredible. Uh, you can know anything about everything in creation if you really understood alchemy, that astrology is alchemy, that math is alchemy, uh, that religion is alchemy, hermetics is alchemy. It's all a branch of alchemy. And what is alchemy? Alchemy is everything in nature. It's nature's language. It's a language of symbols that creation itself uses to communicate to itself. We are part of creation. Even our DNA. What are the letters? A, C, G, D, or something like that. We have four letters. Now, is it A, T, C, G? Let me look that up here. I'll even pause it for you. Let me... Exit my drawing. Uh, it's ATCG, and I call these earth, water, air, and fire. Uh, you, you even really have the alip and the tau is already there. And if you've been with me a while, you know how I feel about the letter C, uh, that it doesn't exist. Uh, that should be either a K or an S to be legitimate. Uh, but it is what it is. Symbols are symbols. Uh, to understand a symbol, you must know... Um, well, let me back up and rephrase that. Symbols... One symbol can be used to express many different things. Like the letter T. Uh, the Tau. 
It can be used to express the fixed cross. Uh, it can be used to express the letter T. Uh, the X, X marks the spot. It's the mutable cross, but it's an X. But uh, it's a symbol on the uh, one of the, uh, on many flags in the southern part of the United States. Uh, you you need to know the legend of how the symbol is being used. It's like reading a map. On a map, you have a legend. I should pull my keyboard in front of me. Map legend symbols. And it helps to know these. Generally, when you get a map, it'll have a legend in the corner uh, to tell you what the different symbols mean. Now, Nature has its own set of symbols, and these run congruent with the same symbols as when you dream. Uh, your dreams are symbolic. They don't really speak in language. They're speaking in symbols, in pictures. Uh, your subconscious mind doesn't speak in language. It speaks in symbols or pictures. So you need to know the legend. To find a legend of a symbol, you have to go to its source. And the source of all symbols, I don't care what they are, uh, goes back to alchemy. Literally to the beginning of creation. Because you can, all of creation, <laughs> I know this is crazy, it starts with a dot. It starts with a single dot. And then you get the line, uh, and which is masculine. It's straight. And then you get Eve or the feminine out of it by using that dot, anchor, that center point, and the line to make the circle. Uh, actually, I should have done it this well. Let me... I dislike it when it does this. One of the features on this I don't like. Um, I, I need to digress here for just a second because of what I just did with the dot, the line. We're trained to look at it this way, actually. In Western thinking, we would do it this way, which is that way, but truly it should be dot and up and then around because east is up. Not, we think of, when I, we look at maps, we generally think west to the left, east to the right, north is up, and south is down. We call it the news, north, east, south, and west, from all direction, the news. Uh, but astrology, along with Freemasonry, uh, both teach that east is up. I'm sure you'll find that in the other teachings as well, if you dig, because they all verify one another, because they're all teaching the same thing, just from a different perspective. A different school of thought and um, I've been doing the chakras how all of this relates to who we are to the human body because that's where we're trapped it's where we exist for now is within the body you're not the body but you're within the body and uh, the real war that occurs is the conflict between the consciousness and the body because the body actually has a mind of its own uh, the heart has a mind of its own uh, you have a mind of your own your subconscious has a mind of its own uh, 
it has a consciousness of its own. Put it that way. Uh, the universe has many consciousness, but as one, it's a collective. It's just one consciousness. It, it's just we are many thoughts or subconsciences within the greater consciousness. Uh, nothing exists without consciousness. Consciousness manifests what we call matter or DNA or the material realm or this simulation, hologram, whatever you want to call it. It is consciousness that manipulates it. You can do it, and that depends, and how that is done literally depends upon what cross you're on and what age we're in, uh, whether we're vibrating from a feminine uh, ax axis or a masculine axis, whether we're vibrating from... Um, a mutable state, a fixed stable state, or a cardinal zenith state. And all that information is encoded in our natal charts. All of it. Everything. Uh, you can see what is, what was, and the potential of what will be. Which brings me to an interesting topic about prophecy, uh, biblical prophecy, religious prophecies, uh, even um, the old seers that we would have called witches or something, like Mother Shipton. These people weren't really religious, uh, like the oracles of Delphi. They weren't what we would refer to as religion today. They were ritualistic uh, by nature and ceremonial, uh, but different from what we refer to as the Abrahamic religions today. I exclude the Vedic. They're completely different. Um, let me pause for a second. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Kelly was making noises. I wasn't sure what was going on. She's a, She was dreaming. She's having a dream in her, moving around in her sleep. Anyway, about prophecy, because we're always told that uh, everything, all the prophecies, like of the Old Testament, must be fulfilled. And we're told that some of them have already been, happened, some of them are happening, and more will happen. And really, all of these prophecies are just the stories of what we attach to the Zodiac. Even our fairy tales come from the Zodiac. Even our, our alphabets come from the Zodiac. Everything was encoded into the heavens. It's like, in my understanding, what occurred if we go by the tales that are literally told around the world, that there was this great flood. But these angels or whatever knew this flood was going to happen. And they asked Enoch to uh, intercede with them for God. Uh, and God said no. So they made a plan. And what they did was took all of the schools of thought, no matter what it was, and they took one set of symbols and each school of thought applied those symbols to their teachings and they cast it up into the stars as a story or a teaching, um, a ritual, a ceremony, a way of life, a religion, a song, a rhyme, uh, a language, just anything you can think of. Uh, mathematics was encoded, geometry is encoded, language is encoded everything, even the difference between everything in nature in the natural alchemical world is based on phi, uh, 1.618. But everything that man makes, uh, we do it by the ratio of pi, 3.14159. Uh, both are infinite. Both are infinite. So, uh, a lot of these 
prophecies, uh, many were told that they're going to happen. There's nothing you can do to stop it. But others are told as a warning, a potential, just like in your natal charts. When I do a natal chart, which I, I've really only done one in a very long time, uh, you, you, you can see the potential of what your abilities are, uh, what your, uh, your, your troubles are going to be, what your downfalls are, what you need to work on, your obstacles. There you go. That's a much better word. Your obstacles in life. Because we all have them to overcome. Um, we seem to think there's part of us that seems to think that life is supposed to be easy and all about happiness or this fairy tale love story. And that's simply not true. Uh, life is a journey, and a journey is always hard. You go through over rivers and through streams and mountains and valleys and deserts in, in your life. You go through winters, summers, springs, and falls. You go through the snows and the droughts, through the fires and the rains, uh, through the storms, the days and the nights. It's forever in a constant state of transmutation. At least it is in this um, mutable age. Uh, the next age will be a more stable one. Uh, not to say I don't think we'll transmute, because nature is ever. Uh, to move to the cardinal state is, again, a transmutation to move from one cross to the other. And we do that in our our lifetimes. Uh, through your Saturn returns, you move from the cross and the sign you were born in to another one. And then on your second Saturn return, you move to a third. And you can look at it and tell whether your potential is to... Um, whether you're going to go up the ladder or down the ladder, whether you're ascending or descending, whether you're moving from a mutable state to a stable state to a cardinal state or to a cardinal state to a mutable state in life. We all go through these processes. All of us do. And it's not easy. It's hard. It's a struggle. Um, the thing I understand about it most is that you can't do it alone. No one person can do it alone. No man is an island. Uh, I'm pretty much a recluse myself. Huh. But I have Kelly, and uh, I still have a few cats. Uh, those of you who've been on Brighteon with me, you know, I had a couple of females get pregnant, and I started feeding them. And suddenly, I had about 30 cats. And uh, then they started disappearing. And I saw a brand new animal control that we now have here in Atoka. And they were trapping them and euthanizing them. So... I, I, I saved as many as I could. All the kittens but two got homes, and both of those were the runts. All of the females got spayed but one. Unfortunately, uh, she got, well, I take that back, two. Two did not get spayed. One was already pregnant uh, before she even stopped weaned her kittens. They done had her pregnant again, and this is common with her. They do this to her about two, three times a year, that the poor girl just stays pregnant. But she is a good mother, and she is, she's an outside cat, but I wouldn't call her feral anymore. She spent too much time with me. She rubs up against my legs and meows to me for food, and she's waiting on me uh, to make sure she gets fed. And so I've still been feeding her and two of the kittens. 
and then I have about four male tomcats that come to feed. And Mama Possum, uh, a couple of her babies took up with the cats. I'm not sure if they think they're cats, uh, but they come at night with what I call the night crew. Uh, generally, the, the big males, they come at night to eat, and the kittens hang out as well. But they come, they're, they're growing up with the kittens. And uh, like I said, I think they think they're cats. They hiss at me. Uh, they open their mouth, show you their teeth, and just like a cat would. Uh, they definitely don't play dead. Anyway, um, this place, alchemy, teaches us that through observation of nature itself, that we can attain the knowledge of what alchemy does, which is transmutation. And it's a repeated transmutation to achieve predominantly one thing. And that's what is referred to in alchemy as the Philosopher's Stone. Again, uh, in mathematics, it would be uh, the perfect theory of, re of, of life and everything. What's the answer to life and everything? Uh, mathematically speaking, uh, it, that would be math's Philosopher's Stone. Each subject has its own apex, its own end game, but they all end up at the same place. And that's because it's a circle. You always end up back at the beginning. You always end up back at the beginning. You always end up where you started. It's like NASCAR. They go around and around and around. And to me, that's a ritual. And to me, it's kind of messed up because there are... They only go to the left, uh, which is what I call mundane. That's your day-to-day. -day. Your day-to-day, -day, our day-to-day -day calendar, it, it's counterclockwise. It goes to the left, and it's mundane. Uh, when it needs to be, to see the big picture, you have to go to the right. You have to go to the right. I remember uh, when video games start, first really came out, um, I... We had the, like the Atari, and uh, I kind of skipped uh, the first Nintendo uh, NES, but I got on the Super NES, and I quickly figured out uh, the pattern. It's all a pattern. Each little room or area you walk into, it's a grid. Everything's based on a grid. So either you turn to the left or you turn to the right, and you you systematically go through the whole grid one by one and until you clear the whole space and it's pretty much like that in life as well uh, a lot of people like to skip over um, i used to like to do that in school i kind of had my own way of what would be considered cheating but i would just read my book textbooks at the beginning of the year throw them in my locker and I, I didn't bother with them again I didn't take them out because I already had it all in my head I know not everybody has that ability I knew that then and I know it now but through repetition you can learn anything and that's kind of what life does to us it puts us through these repeated cycles until we learn. Uh, the thing is, we don't know what it is we're trying to learn. And truly, it is really just only one thing, and that's to know thyself. That's it. To know thyself. Uh, and we're created, and creation is in such a way that not only do... Uh, people need other people, but animals need other animals. Uh, the fish need the ocean. The birds need the sky. Man needs the earth. We all, all, all of creation needs the light. Um, we need each other. It's, we're all symbiotic. Everything here 
consumes something else and everything is alive. To me, uh, a couple of out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences taught me quickly that everything is living and conscience, even a rock. Uh, the Bible tells us that Jesus, uh, the Pharisees told Jesus to shut these people up. And he said, if they shut up, the very rocks would cry out. And true enough, everything in the material world has a vibration, even a rock. Uh, the grass is alive, flowers are alive, uh, the microbes in the air is alive, everything is living. And there's no such thing as death. It's just transmuting from one state to another. It's just in a process of becoming. Uh, the the body, uh, we say the body dies. The body is not dead. It's transmuting because it goes into a process of decay. It It is consumed by the uh, creatures of the earth uh, and transformed back into dirt. And the process starts all over. Uh, in a way, it can appear to be a very cruel, wicked place. Uh, and indeed it is. Uh, it's liter Nature is literally designed for survival of the fittest. Uh, but man was given a unique ability, uh, and that's brain over brawn. That's knowledge and wisdom over nature. Literally, the first commandment, uh, there were two. The two first commandments was not given to Adam or Moses. It was given to six-day man. And he, male and female, they were created, and they were told to be fruitful and multiply. That was the first commandment. And the second commandment is they were told to subdue the earth, the elements, the elements themselves to subdue the earth. You till the ground, you build the house, you cultivate the garden, you create the art. And uh, art is one of the greatest things we have because, again, that's the language of alchemy and nature is pictures. It's what you see. Uh, and within art, like nature, our dream state, our subconscious, uh, the elite, they speak in symbolism. Uh, the words coming out of their mouth is just bullshit. It's just there to distract you and tell you what you want to hear. Uh, that's why I keep telling you, you don't even know what this place is. Because there are no such thing as countries. They're just not. There hasn't been for a very long time. That's just something that's told to you by the puppet masters, by the puppets. The puppet masters don't tell us. The puppets do. The puppet masters, uh, they rule the whole thing. I don't care if it's a communist country, a, a, a democratic country, a monarchy. It matters not. That's all irrelevant. It's just one big thing. We're, we're just kept in different sections. Some of us are in the balcony, in the nosebleed section. Some of us got front row seats. Some of them are backstage, part of the plan. And what's the plan? Uh, to take over control. To take over nature and reimagine it in their own image. That much is clear. It, what is, that's what's going down. They want to take over DNA, which is nature. Everything has DNA in it. Rock got DNA. Dirt got DNA. Air, it's got some DNA because there's stuff in it. Uh, and that's what they're doing. That's what the sorcerers and, and the biblical Greek 
uh, is the word pharmakia, sorcerer. Uh, it's pharmakia. And they're supposed to be the really bad guys in the end, or the sorcerers, that they'll have no place and no part in the coming kingdom. Uh, you'll only have the true alchemist that helps uh, enhance transmutation for the better, for for um, evolution, not de-evolution. They're trying to throw us into ignorance, darkness. All knowledge is perverted. All of it. All of it. I remember being very young and a friend giving me a book called uh, The Lies My Teacher Told Me. And even that book didn't cover the tip of the iceberg that it's not a few lies. It's everything is a lie. Everything we've been taught and told. Everything they're still pushing out. It's all fake. None of it's real. None of it. None of these elections are real. All the energy you waste in that, you're just wasting it because they're all in on it. And it doesn't matter who you vote for. Your vote never counted unless there is a none of the above box to check. Uh, then you only get to choose between those pre-selected candidates that are allowed to run. And so there, uh, this number one, America was never created as a democracy. You need to wrap your mind around that fact. It was created as a republic. In a republic, the mob doesn't rule. In democracy, the mob rules. But in a republic, to vote, you had to be a property owner. That was the only prerequisite. It didn't matter about the color of your skin. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't even think it mattered about um, gender other than I'm not sure women were allowed to own property in the beginning because there was like 13 colonies. Uh, but that may not necessarily be true. But yeah, it was, you, you voted because you were a property owner. You had a, you had a dog in the race. You had a stake in the game. You owned some of that dirt or laid claim to it or homesteaded it or whatever you did that gave you the right to vote. and uh, But when the mob rules, they want to take away those property rights. Now again, that is really contradictory to the original Native American tradition, was that nobody can own the land. It's not for you to own. It's not your, it's not your land. It's, it's God's land, it's creation's land, it's nature's, it's everybody, it's us and the animals. We all have to live here together. And we're supposed to be in um, synchronicity with nature, cultivating the earth to enhance humanity. But that's not what's going on. But again, through prophecy, we're told that one, this had to happen. Um, to when you let an al a part of the alchemical process is called fermentation. Uh, you add the yeast, and it makes the brew, it makes it brew. Things start bubbling, and um, once all that's done, you've got to. All the scum comes to the top. All of the froth and the scum, it all bubbles to the top. And then the sediment goes to the bottom. And what you want is that clean middle, that middle ground. So you ha through the fermentation process, you have to let this occur. And now each still have a purpose. Each are still of value. The sediment, the pure in the middle and then the froth on top. They still are recycled back into the process to do it all over again. It's called refinement. And this is what 
alchemy teaches us and nature teaches us and life teaches us is you do something over and over and over again till you master it. That's the definition of Kung Fu. You do it over and over again till you can do it in your sleep. You can do it blindfolded. That repetition, repetition. You teach yourself to do it. Well, the elite have used this same principle to control mankind. Uh, the repetition in religion, the repetition in the school system, the repetition in the, the work week or the bank week or all of that crap over and over again, like monotonous. You're just almost robotic doing it. Uh, but you can do this for yourself uh, to break that programming, to reteach yourself. We have to learn. The only way to really wake up and see what's going on around you is to take the time to learn the symbology of alchemy and astrology and to teach your brain, to teach your eyes, to teach your ears how to observe it in everything. Because we've been programmed to not see it, to not know what it means, to not recognize it. Uh, if you ever want to give yourself a gift in your life, give yourself a liberal arts education. Because that's what the elite get that we don't, as ple what I call plebs, the peasants. We don't get that. You got to have money to get a liberal arts degree. Now you can just go online and get it for free. The only thing stopping anybody now from an education is just sheer laziness. That they don't care are too many distractions in life. They're stuck in the lower chakras and they don't know how to get out from under the burden. Uh, especially people that are in corporate jobs. Uh, they have it tough. But at the same time, they're on the inside. They could actually help change the game. They're in a position to do that uh, while walking through the fire. So when you're in corporate the corporate world, it's not corporate America, it's corporate world, uh, you're, you are in the fire. Our pet goat too taught us uh, the corporate world's coming down. It's being engineered to come down. Uh, the entertainment business, the news business, the media, everything is being discredited. Uh, everything you see on television and literally the internet and everything, this wokeism, it's there to destroy Western culture, Western way of thinking, Western society. It's there to take it all down. Uh, they want to destroy religion. They want to destroy our philosophies, our traditions, the cultures, our fairy tales, our, our stories, our histories, our understandings, our way of life. Because they have a brand new world already created, ready to roll out for us. And um, all that's holding them back are a few seals they have to break. And I'm becoming more understanding of we are those seals. Uh, they're within us. It's us they want to break. Not just because we're we're the ones manifesting all this. We're the ones manifesting the chaos. Again, the war that's on the outside in the world, this crazy that's going on, is because of the crazy that's going on inside of humanity. Why is that crazy going on? Why is all that crazy going on? Because of right here. That upside down rainbow woke flag is turning our world, our chakras, upside down. That's what's going on. So, what we perceive a good is bad, salt is pepper, up is down, east is west. We have to learn to look at it from so many different ways to see the big picture. There's a lot of knowledge out there. Just anything you really want to know, if you dig deep enough, you can find it, even truth. 
let's talk about the word truth, and I'll wrap this up. Uh, from the old Latin, we have we get the word veritas, and it means truth. V E R. Or we can just do the V R T really because you're only dealing with the consonants. Uh, but we get the word vertical from the word veritas or truth. And that's up and down. That's an upright man, a vertical man, rather than a horizontal man. When the fixed cross was horizontal and remember east is up right now the fixed cross is just bare, it's kind of leaning because it's not quite east yet it's fixing to be in the eastern position and take over the mutable cross when Aquarius moves into the spring equinox uh, but when the cross was like this, that, that's when Jesus was in the tomb, the man on the cross. That's when the man on the cross was in the tomb, because he was vertical. He was horizontal. He was laid out like a dead person, but an upright man. And you have the seven up, which are your chakras. Again, it's encoded in everything. Uh, again, the upside upside is literally the cardinal cross. Uh, you're either going up or down. Uh, most of us are what is called in the valley of decision. We're stuck in the middle and don't know which way to go. Don't know what to do. Uh, there's only one way to go, and that's inside. That's the direction everyone needs to head. When the shit hits the fan, the only thing that will help you abide is having that connection in the upper chakras to the inside, whether it's in your heart or in your crown chakra. Be in the upper chakras on the inside. You want to get all seven up. All right, you want to get all seven up, which is the great thing about Aquarius, because when you're in the age of Saturn, Aquarius and Capricorn, uh, all the chakras are ruled by the crown chakra. Right now, all the chakras are being ruled by uh, mutable water, Pisces, mutable air, mutable earth. They're all in a transmutation state, and um, two of them are in the lower chakras, Jupiter. And in the upper chakras, at this point, Mer Mercury is now put on the Loki mask, and he's the trickster. Sure, he'll give you exactly what you ask for. That's why w the little saying, be careful what you ask for, you just might get it, is associated back to Loki. Be careful what you ask, which is, again, Mercury, Gemini, the prince of the power of the air, Virgo, the damsel in distress, uh, the virgin, Mother Mary, as they call her. Uh, all right, now I've gotten way off base there. I just go where the thoughts and the inspiration leads me. I never make a video with a script. And I never edit it. I might pause it here and there, but that's about it. Uh, but I am going to wrap this up. This is just to really open my YouTube channel back up. I've got a lot more coming. I've had an epiphany. I've been working for about two years now trying to reconcile the symbols of the tarot deck with alchemy and astrology I, to, to make them proper, to put them in their proper place. And I've had a bit of an epiphany lately. So I'm going to be talking about the tarot deck and what what it is, uh, what its purpose is, how to properly use it, how to create your own. Uh, it's qu quite incredible 
uh, how we can use symbology like that. But really, it's just a point of divination. Different teachings from Hermetics in Gemini to Freemasonry in Taurus to Kabbalah in Aries to religion in Pisces, they all talk about divination. Uh, whether it's astro astrology and alchemy talk about divination. And it's extracting the knowledge. Uh, and they each have a different way. The Old Testament God, he had the Uman and the Thuman, the black and the white stone, the yes and the no. It's called casting lots. Uh, uh, the Sabaeans and the, a lot of the Arabians, they, they had the Ouija board. The original Ouija, you had the serpent and the lines in the sand with the fire. The original Ouija board. Um, there's always been divination. You pray and you fast in religions to have that experience. To what? To gain knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of yourself. Knowledge of you. Who you are. Why you're here. What you're here to learn. You know... The greatest thing that you can really deprogram yourself to do, the first thing you should really deprogram yourself to do, is to understand that these religious books, I don't care if it's the Bible, the Protestant or Catholic, or the Hebrew, or the Talmud, or the Quran, or e even any of the Vedics, uh, uh, all of that, they, um, they're not religious books. They're freaking manuals. They're like a, a, a how-to manual about life. And how did each one, like the Old Testament, you've got different gods in there talking. It's not one god and one devil. It's the four elements. And in there are three different mutative states. Because uh, all things come in threes. So, again, I don't denounce solar or lunar astrology. One, I can't, because I don't fully understand them. I don't get where they get why being in this sign makes you feel that way. I get why alchemy says it, but I don't get why they say it. So, I have no understanding of it. And I am smart enough to know that knowledge without understanding is a dangerous thing. And, but knowledge with understanding uh, brings forth wisdom. And that's the road we need to be on. You need to move from that knowledge, mutable state, to a stable, fixed, understanding state. And then you can have the cardinal state of wisdom. Because the mutable cross itself is knowledge. Uh, Right now, the knowledge that we war against, uh, biblically we're told, is Gemini. Uh, we war against, not, not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities in high places. Uh, the prince of the power of the air. The children of disobedience, they are called. The lawless ones. They're here to break the laws, to take down, to break all taboos. They, they want to destroy everything. All religion, all culture, all tradition, uh, all heritage, all, all everything, all economy, all jobs, all way of life, all families. Everything is designed. They have systematically designed it to all implode like a building coming down all at one time. And they're, they're erasing what they're referring to as the old world. One, why are they doing this? They have extracted what they wanted from it. They have achieved their purpose. They have regained their technology, uh, told us it was alien, uh, when it's not, it's humanity's technology that we lost in the flood. And we're just now getting it back. And everything is a lie. There, There is no new thing under the sun. 
no new thing. All of this has happened before. It'll all happen again because it's circles within circles. And they know about the circles. They know what happened before. And they're just pulling a peat and repeat on us. They're, they're good at this because they've done it over and over. But all we get really here, we're so distracted, just trying to survive. Uh, we don't even know the concept of thrive. We don't. We've been held back as a species by our own kind. Though, but they are all living in the lower chakras. They don't want to go to heaven. They don't want to be in the upper chakras. They have no use for it. They have no use for uh, a connection to God. They get what pleases them, what makes them happy uh, in the lower chakras. A lot of people do. And that's simply where they were born. Their potential can go either way. Uh, somebody with a chart with an excellent potential to move from a mutable cross to a fixed cross to a cardinal cross still can fail because we all make our choices. We all have our choices. Uh, the opposite of Pisces is Virgo. If you don't choose one, you automatically get the other. Because regardless of what we believe, uh, we have been trapped in a duality. And until you learn that it's a duality of mind, let me put it that way. Uh, and until you reprogram yourself to understand all things come in threes, that they're hiding that third choice from you. And it's your choice. That's the one they're hiding from you. And it's within you. It's not on the left or the right. It's right down the middle. It's the straight and narrow. And you have to walk it alone. And to do it, even when you start in the lower chakras, if you have to overcome each one. So the first thing you give up is your emotional attachments, your rage, your anger, your happiness and joy, you give it all up. Uh, your lust, your desires, into the second chakra, Jupiter. You give up all materialism is eliminated in the first two chakras. All the cares of this world, this world age, and all of its distractions and woes and worries and cares, you have to overcome that. And to do that, you have to master it. You don't let the body tell you what to do. Your, your brain over brawn, your mind over matter. It's, it's all metaphysical anyway. That's what they understand you don't. You're in the lower chakras trying to fight the world when the world is created by the upper chakras metaphysically, consciously, collectively, subconsciously. Uh, we can go back about 15 to 20 years now with these together rituals. And they are all over the world. All of the elite are doing them. All the monarchies, all the religions, all the politicians, all the corporations. Uh, just like all the wokeism. They're all doing these rituals uh, to get her together. They just add a word before or after it, whether it's a campaign slogan or a ritual retreat or a mental health ad or an ad for a charity. It's, it's all, they're encoding it all. And they want to get her. Who is her? Who is her? Her's the prize. That's what the her is. Her is the bride. Her is the bride. They want to get her. Uh, we create her. She's the matrix. Uh, matrix is a womb. W-O-M-B. And it's feminine. And it's where they want to take over creation. They want to destroy the creation of God, uh, of nature itself. This creation of Pisces that actually they created. Uh, they want to destroy it. 
and they want to bring back their old kingdom of Babylon, really. Uh, that's why I keep calling them the Babylonian priesthood, because uh, everywhere I look, it all, it all takes me back to one place. It's, it's back to the age of Leo, and they want the age of Leo back. Sorry, we're headed into the opposite of the age of Leo, and that's Aquarius. So what do they do? They put us in upside down world. So when we walk into Aquarius, we're not venerating Aquarius. We're venerating Leo right back to the beginning, right back to the Babylonian priesthood. Same shit, different age and same lie. But we don't have to buy the lie this time. And as a matter of fact, it's not even for sale. They're going to force it on you. It's not for sale. It's not. It's free. It's mandatory. It will be mandatory. So we all have to make the decision of each fork of the road in life, each choice we make. And they trained us to look to the left or to the right. When we should just walk on. Just keep going on. Straight on. Straight up. Straight up. Be the vertical man. Be the upright man. Do the right thing. Veritas. Truth. It's a symbol. There's even a symbol for it. All right, people. One hour, one minute. Time to shut this video down. Uh, you know what I'm going to say. I've always said it. Uh, bank your karma. Commit your random act of kindness. You, the only way you can change the world is to change yourself you change you inside and the world around you will change to accommodate the new you this is how this is done the war is within us if we change ourselves the world has no choice but to change because we're creating it and we can make it whatever we want it to be there is no limit right now because we're in this mutable age of Pisces of on the mutable cross, Gemini does rule air, and the sky is the limit. But within, you have access to the whole zodiac. The sky is not the limit. You can go beyond the stars, literally. You can. There is no limit. There is no end. There is no death. All that's a lie. We can manifest whatever we want. And the more of us that are together to get her uh, then to get her her again is the bride and if you've been with me you know the bride is the new Jerusalem and that is a new zodiac a new age a new world a new cross a new frequency a new gender a new everything a new everything but that's where we're going all right, as always, uh, there'll n never be ads or commercials or monetization on this channel unless YouTube forces it. If a commercial shows up here, um, they've put it there for copyright. I've showed a picture or something that they want to make money on. Uh, and that's what they've generally been doing. Instead of shutting a video down, they'll just monetize it and take some money. Uh, now, I haven't completed all my new updates on YouTube, so I'm getting to that. And I'll find out where I stand. Uh, but as for now, uh, this channel is 100% viewer supported by subscribers like you.